Good evening, everybody. My name is Lynn Donaldson, and I'm the Director of Support at Greater Peterborough UTC. Uh, myself and Emma Coleman are the student support team here. Um, I'm just here tonight to talk you through a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is to talk you through some of what have been our biggest challenges in recent months, and actually looking ahead for Year 11, um, some of the biggest challenges for them are going to be in these coming months. So I'm just going to talk to you of some strategies with how to cope with change and how to cope with stresses and strains in life and, and how we how we get through that. Some of us have, as adults, obviously, will benefit from some of these tips as well. Um, but I really I want to share this with you now so that you can support your young people to uh, having a really successful year. So I'm just going to start with change. Um, we have faced so many changes as a nation, as a world in the last few months that it's really important that we kind of proactively look at how we cope with that change. Um, so some suggestions here, we've, we've, if you think about how our lives have changed in the last few months, we look at how our lives have changed in terms of communication, in terms of the, the way we operate in society, the freedoms, the things we have to do now, the way we operate in school, the way we have been educating our young people. Um, it's been so different. I think something we just need to ground ourselves with a few tips. So this is some things I would suggest for you and your young people to cope with change. Firstly, focus on what you can control. So there's so much that when, you, when you're coping with change, the change can feel overwhelming. It can feel like it is completely controlling your entire life. But actually the way to do that is to control the percentages. So think about planning your week. Uh, think about how you can sort of set up boundaries in your week for yourself. So that's taking care of the basics. It's considering how many hours of sleep do I need? And young people need more sleep um, than, than in order to, for their brains to continue to grow and develop. So they do need sleep. And it's really important that that is there because that does help to cope, um, helps you to cope and rationalize everything else that's going on in your life. Controlling your food and drink in, intake, thinking about what it is that is going to um, be nutritious for you, be healthy for you, is really important. You can control that. And you can control whether your intake is good for you or whether that's starting to spiral out of control. Exercise is another way that we can take control of the basics. The, the, the way we care for ourselves and our bodies has a real impact on mental health. Mental and physical health go hand in hand. So those things are really, really important. And if you've taken care of the basics, the percentage of your week that is now involved in things that are changing is much smaller than it felt like at the beginning. And then if you build in your opportunities for your normal fun activities, and just even if it's once a week when you sit and watch a film or you sit and watch a terrible program on television and laugh at it with your family or your friends, you're starting to build in opportunities for normal activity. And then the change is a small percentage again. And it means that you can start to really focus on the fact that the majority of your life isn't changing. or just a few things that are. So that's my first tip is control what you can control. Secondly, what you're left with after you've done that control is probably like to be quite it's quite probably like to be quite negative and it might be quite traumatic. There's a lot going on there. So it's about reframing negative thoughts where you can. And obviously, where change is very, very difficult, very dramatic, this might not always be possible. But sometimes you can always, you can, you can usually find a way of making a negative thought a positive thought. Because it's how you think about a situation. That, is, um, that, that, is, that influences how you feel. So if you believe that a change in routine is hard, then if you continue to believe that this change in routine is hard, then it's almost like a self-fulfilling self -fulfilling prophecy. You come back to that idea, you believe it's hard because you've told yourself it's hard. But if you can start to say, yes, being back at school is hard, that change in routine is difficult, but actually that means I get to see my friends in person more frequently. That's a good thing. You find a way of making it positive reframe that thought. The lockdown has been difficult on all of us and um, not seeing extended family as much is really hard um, but a way to reframe that might be to consider the positives it's, it's taught you. It might be that you've you know talked around having you Zoom and now actually we talk to them more often. It's certainly the case you know you, you, because of the technology we're talking to people more often even if it's at a distance. So that's a couple of things to help us cope with change. And, and stress is something I always talk about with year 11 presentation evening because stress and exams is, is so common um, and we do put so much pressure on ourselves to do well in those sorts of um, situations. And this is going to be an uncertain year for year 11. So 
We need to know these techniques so that we can employ them as soon as we can, so that the stress doesn't become overwhelming. So some tips for coping with stress. Exercise relieves the buildup of fight or flight hormones. Now this is something we covered in PSHE with this year group last year. So fight or flight hormones absolutely flood the body. And one way to reduce that flood of hormones is to exercise it away, so just move, move the body so that it is dissipating. Fresh air and sunlight also reduce that tension and exercise outdoors is really good for you and it has a huge impact on your mental health. As I said earlier, mental health and physical health go hand in hand. Something that's worth bearing in mind for the adults as much as the students, and I am guilty of this in the darkest days of November, um, more caffeine doesn't equal more energy at all. It means we're more wired and it means we're more jumpy. So consider intake, uh, food and drink intake and how it will have an impact on you. We know that biscuits and caffeine are actually not going to make us any feel better. Feel any better. They're going to make us feel more stressed um, because you know, the, the sugar highs, the sugar lows and the caffeine is just not going to be good for us. And we know that. So when we're not very stressed, we can plan to not use those as support well, because we know actually that it's not, it doesn't help in the long run. And um, this is something I believe strongly in. Sleep fixes almost everything. If your sleep patterns are dist disturbed, then you um, everything becomes more stressful. Your body can't cope. So stress does uh, just stress is more common in people who are not sleeping well. So do everything you can to get enough sleep. Those three are really important. Um, and then there are loads of relaxing activities that work for some people. And if this is a case of trial and error, they really don't necessarily work for everybody. Uh, meditation or mindfulness can be really, really helpful for some people. And for other people, it just doesn't work. It stresses them out more because they can't do it. But it's worth trying. Um, yoga, Pilates, anything relaxing forms of exercise can be really good. They focus on your breathing and they focus on you. And just focusing on the energy in your body and not focusing on what's going on around you. Breathing exercises, listening to music, anything that you can to Google relaxing activities and try some and see if they work for you. But the best thing to do is to try them when you're only a little bit stressed. Don't wait until you are extremely stressed to try these because you need to build up the habit uh, and the kind of like the regular practice of some of these things so that you know you can go to it as a strategy for coping with stress. So I hope those tips have been helpful because actually, that's what you can do before you come to us. And if you've tried all of that and you still need more support, and that's absolutely okay if you do, because you are young people, uh, you are not, you know, you don't have all the strategies yet, you don't have all the answers. If you do need um, some more support, then talking to people, anyone, about anything actually can have a really good impact on your stress. It can take your mind off things, it can focus you on something else completely different. Or if you are able to, talk to somebody and break down what's stressing you out. Work out the root of the problem. Talk to somebody who can help you with a solution. Take control of your stress. Don't let it control you. Find a way of breaking it down. Now, we can support with that. So in the student support office on the ground floor, we're opposite computer science and art. We offer that drop-in support. If you do want to break down that stress, if you want to work out what it is that's really stressing you out, and it's if you're not struggling, if you're, you've tried these strategies and it's not enough, then you come down and you, you pop in to see us. We, hope, we also help with pastoral support with attendance, with coping strategies for lessons and coping with issues amongst friends. We offer um, an appointment service for the crops mentoring service. We've got very sm sort of small amounts of um, slots for people to take part in that mentoring service, which is not counselling, but it is uh, somebody to talk to once a week plan your strategies and think about how you're going to cope in the future with stresses. Um, exam stresses is a very common one for the mentoring service. We are also able to arrange appointments with the school nurse and the ICASH sexual health uh, nurses as well. If we feel, once we've spoken to you, that you need some external support, we have a range of options available once we've gone through all of those strategies with you. We can help you to get a referral to COOP, which is an online mental health and wellbeing support service. We have um, Centre 33 in Peterborough, which is a local counselling service for 16 to 24 year olds. Um, we can also put you in touch with local youth and mental health services. And um, so this, the, there are different tiers of support, basically. Um, you do need to, you know, there's loads you can do yourself before you come and talk to us. And if you do want to talk to us, you're welcome to pop down at any time. 
and, and then if you do need that further support, we can put you in contact with those people. If you need a reminder of how of what that support is and how and how to get in contact with us or anybody else, you will now find in, in very shortly you will find um, student welfare boards in the year group social spaces that contains loads of information about internal and external support and a load of, a load of information for you to look at there. Throughout the year, we do assemblies and we um, drop in bits and pieces into mentoring matters as well, so you will understand the support that's available to you. And obviously, if you have any questions, you are welcome to pop and see us on the ground floor. Most of year 11 know where we are now. You are absolutely welcome to pop in and see us and, and ask us any questions. Um, so, so that's the student support uh, team. I will be online this evening as well, so if parents or students have any questions, you are absolutely welcome to ask me those questions then. It's been lovely to talk to you. I hope that's been helpful. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon.